Topping our news this week, from protests to prizes. It wasn't long ago people were marching outside the Humane Society of Macomb, but we'll tell you why they're now being celebrated by a state organization. And opening their doors, we'll take you inside the Shelby Township Police Station for their open house. Charlie? Macomb County Treasurer Derek Miller is only a few months on the job and he's already up for an election. Coming up, who's challenging him? And it's time for cider, donuts, and picking apples. We're bringing you a special behind the scenes look at one of the best cider mills and orchards in the state. We've got all of this plus much more on this edition of Shelby This Week. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Shelby This Week, where we cover news in Shelby Township and around Macomb County. On this special fall edition of the show, we'll take you a few miles north to Armada, where we spent the day at Blake's Orchard and Cider Mill. We'll take you behind the scenes of the hard cider and winery, show you exactly how they make that delicious cider, and much more. But we need to attend to some news first. The rivalry between Eisenhower and Romeo High School has been brewing for more than 50 years. And this year, parents and community members are wondering, has this gone too far? The night of the Ike vs. Romeo game, students painted profanity and slurs on a rock against Romeo. The rock sits on Van Dyke Avenue just south of 31 Mile, across from the Romeo Theater. It's presumed the spray painting was done by Ike students, saying Romeo is filled with hillbillies, among other profanity. But the rock has been repainted to simply say, Go Romeo! This rock is located on private property and not a school campus. School officials are involved in this incident, so head to our Shelby TV Facebook page to hear what they're saying, along with more from the Eisenhower High School principal. From protesters to awards, the Humane Society of Macomb has certainly changed in the last year. It was just April of last year when protesters marched in front of the Humane Society saying the conditions inside were deplorable. The goal was to get new shelter management and to ultimately save more animals after claims that the animals were euthanized without reason. The Humane Society of Macomb just received an award as one of the two most improved limited admission shelters in the state, saving 40% more dogs and cats in 2015 than previous years. The award was presented to the shelter at the Michigan Pet Fund Alliance Getting to the Goal Conference. Under new management, the shelter has changed from having a very high kill rate to having a high save rate. Shelter staff hope to have a save rate close to 90% this year. The doors opened up and the community was welcomed in for the Shelby Township Police Department's open house. Nice to meet you. How old are you? At the open house, residents got a tour of the station and officers were on hand to answer questions, talk with the community, and perform child safety seat inspections. The Honor Guard, Tactical Team, K-9 Unit, and Dispatch Team were among the operations highlighted. We caught up with Chief Robert Shalide to talk about the department opening up to the community, and he said it's all part of having a good relationship with residents. Since the Dallas attacks, uh, our police department has received more support than I've ever seen any police department get in the last 30 years. And I've talked to my colleagues, they're all getting support, but nobody is getting level of support like our police department is right here. Uh, I mean, I, don't, I stop bringing my lunch in uh, daily. Uh, I don't bring a lunch anymore because every single day somebody's bringing up lunch to feed all the police officers. If you're interested in watching more from the police open house, head to shelbytv.org for the latest edition of Straight Talk, where the chief will talk more about the challenges they face, and you'll hear from more of our township police officers. And when one police department experiences a loss, they all do. Shelby Township Police attended the funeral for Sergeant Keith Style, the Detroit police officer who was shot while chasing a man suspected of several carjackings. Shelby PD had several officers there, along with members of the Honor Guard. Sergeant Style from St. Clair Shores was promoted to captain at his ceremony and was then laid to rest in Clinton Township. Police are investigating a serious crash that killed one man and sent another driver to the hospital with serious injuries. This scene shut down M53 between 23 and 24 Mile Road earlier this month. 
A 44-year-old man from KPAC was driving a red Ford Explorer heading southbound on M53. He crossed the center median and hit a white Chevy Malibu driven by a 37-year-old man from Memphis. The Malibu's driver was pronounced dead at the scene. The man in the Explorer is recovering from his injuries as police continue to investigate the crash. It's unknown at this time whether drugs or alcohol were a factor. And take a look at another accident that happened just days later that had a better outcome. A woman driving this silver car hit a light pole and flipped over while heading north on Van Dyke Avenue and Pacton Street. DTE crews made it to the scene to repair the pole and the driver made it out of the crash without a single scratch. And an update from the office of Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle, hundreds of jobs have been added in the county. The Bureau of Labor Statistics shows Macomb County gained 767 jobs last month, bringing the total to more than 15,800 this year alone. This is the highest number of people employed here in the county in more than 15 years, with more than 410,000. Executive Mark Hackle says this job growth is a clear sign the county can compete in a globally competitive market. Two of the military's top honors were given to the National Honor Guard's 127th Wing, stationed at the Selfridge Air National Guard base here in Macomb County. The unit's Commander General John Slouch was presented the Carl A. Spatz Award, which is given to the top flying unit in the nation. The Air Force was also awarded the Meritorious Unit Award for its performance both in combat operations. Congratulations to everyone, including the 1,700 airmen at Selfridge. We're counting down the days for election 2016, and Shelby TV is your home for local coverage. This week, Charlie Cadado looks into the race for Macomb County Treasurer. He's standing by now, and Charlie, the incumbent treasurer, is still fairly new to the office. That's right, he sure is. Only a few months on the job, and Democrat Derek Miller is already up for an election. Miller was appointed Macomb County Treasurer this year. He was offered the job after the death of longtime treasurer Ted Wabi. Miller, a former state representative, is being challenged by Republican Larry Rocca, a veteran and longtime perennial candidate. Miller hails from a family who's been in politics for decades. He was also a former Macomb County assistant prosecutor. It's an establishment family, and he was appointed by the establishment. The Democrat Party establishment decided to take him from his elected state representative seat, which he only uh, served for a short amount of time. Uh, I was working on a lot of incredible things that uh, w was in the works when I was a state representative when Ted passed away. And I thought that I could do a better job representing 900,000 constituents than I could representing 90,000 constituents. And that's what we're doing. And there you have it. Rocca says he's running to bring conservative principles to the treasurer's office. Miller is only a few months on the job, but he says he started tax and foreclosure initiatives all over the county. And Kelly, as always, you know where to find more election information. Just head to shelbytv.org and click election 2016. Back to you. Thanks, Charlie. Right after this break, Macomb County residents will start heading north for fall activities and traditions. So when we come back, we'll be on location at Blake's to show you how your favorite cider is made, the newest addition to the orchard, and plus much more. Stay tuned. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back to Shelby This Week. We are right now on location at Blake Farms to learn about everything from the cider to the donuts to how everything is made. And we've got the behind the scenes look. So let's first send it out over to Art Shink, who's in the orchard with the David Blake. And they're going to talk about the foundation of Blake Farms. Art? If you've ever been lucky enough to share some time at Blake's Orchard and Cider Mill with family and friends, you no doubt enjoyed the many fun and entertaining attractions they had to offer. Hay rides, a corn maze, a petting zoo, haunted houses and displays, a winery, 
some of the best fresh made donuts you will ever eat, and you can even ride a train. But without one thing, the fun time and great taste of Blake Cider Mill would never have happened. Apple trees had to grow apples, and nobody knows that better than the Blake family. Dave Blake, general manager of the Cider Mill, clues us in on what goes into maintaining the trees that create the backbone of Blake's farms. We start, you know, really after the apple season is over in November. We work, you know, we take a few weeks off after the new year, but, you know, we're out here pruning through the winter. Um, that's when we have time and that's, you know, when we can get the most done. It's cold out, but, you know, cutting down dead branches, uh, pruning the trees to make sure they grow right for the next year. Uh, pruning is a really important process in getting good apple and obviously weather plays a big part in it as well. Um, and then that's also, you know, springtime, we'll do some planting as well for new trees if there's anything that we need to plant and replace old trees that have died. In the United States, apples are grown commercially in 32 states, with Washington, New York, and Michigan the top producers of a crop that has a countrywide annual wholesale value of almost $4 billion. Here at Blake Farms, they manage about 800 acres, where 42 varieties of apples are grown. So when you have good apples, it seems pretty obvious that the next step would be making use of them. So all the apples are handpicked. Um, we have pickers that go through the orchards and you know, they're picking apples that are on the tree and we also use apples that are on the ground uh, for pressing as well. So we try, not to, we try to minimize our waste. And then from there, after they're picked, they go into our apple grading. Uh, the grader, you know, we'll sort them, whether they're either going to be sold in the store or either wholesaled. Otherwise, the apples that are, you know, have blemishes or have been on the ground will use for pressing and for juice. And luckily with our hard cider, we've been able to use a lot more of the apples that we would have normally been going to waste. Mm -hmm. And so after that, uh, once they get sorted, they go into our pressing. And so the press, you know, they're dumped, washed, and crushed and they go into the rack and cloth press that we have and then from there it gets a flash pasteurization and then goes into the bottle and then sold right to the consumer. And thankfully it's the season where we consumers get to enjoy the great taste the trees at Blake Apple Orchards create for us each fall. So if you get a chance this October help keep your doctor away by celebrating National Apple Month at Blake Cider Mill where even your Granny Smith can find the apple of her eye. All right, so now we're here with Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle, who is a big fan of Blake's Orchard. Do you come every fall? You know what, I, I come almost like year round. I love this place, and how can you not? I mean, when you think about it, there's something for everyone out here at Blake's Orchard. When it once was just like a little orchard, if you will, where they actually sold apples, it has become more than just that. It's a family fun entertainment venue, and even right now, you got uh, some of the kids that are here for field trips, you know, yeah. from, uh, they bring in busloads of kids. So it is an unbelievable place, and it's a jewel here in Macomb County. Well, and you bring your own kids. Oh, yes, my nephews and my nieces and, uh, you know, even a couple kids that I mentor, uh, we come here quite often. And uh, it's not only for the food or to partake in the apples, but the, the playground area, if you will. I mean, it's incredible, the bouncy areas that they got over here, the little racing uh, carts that they have over here. And uh, for adults that just want to come and get away from the kids, obviously, uh, this is a nice little restaurant they got here as well. And, you know, this is obviously our hidden gem in Macomb County. Everyone loves to come here. But let's talk business. Macomb County development wise, you know, what are we looking forward to in 2017? It's exciting. I mean, things that are happening right now, talking about the investments of the big three, that's usually the highlight. We're talking about billions of dollars investment from Ford, uh, from Fiat Chrysler, from General Motors. Each one of them had invested over a billion dollars each in Macomb County over the last four years. That's a statement because obviously, you know, the, the effects of that are going to be reciprocated because of other smaller businesses that are going to take place. Some of the other, if you will, tool and die manufacturing, it's taken off. We go back to where we're at today. It gets no better when you talk about a quality of life than having a place like Lakes Orchard or the other orchards that are up right. here in the northern part of Macomb County uh, that have become more than just a uh, just an orchard. It's become a destination location for family to enjoy. Well, and you can catch... Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle at Blake's probably what every weekend now until Oh absolutely. <laughs> I'm dying to bite this apple, it's just killing me. You can't go for it, go for it. How is it? What kind of apple is it? Mm. Macintosh. His yeah, favorite. favorite. His favorite. We learned that. If we didn't remember like anything from this interview, we did learn that. <laughs> and it's good? I love it. Alright, so there you have it. 
testimony to come down to Blake's. And Dan is somewhere off in the orchard somewhere. Dan, what are you doing right now? Thanks, Kelly. We're actually in the orchard at Blake's. And right now we're going to talk about a little bit about the history of Blake's Apple Orchard. Um, how did it actually start out? started in 1946. Uh, my grandpa's brother and his wife, they were living in Detroit and working for a Chrysler and decided to quit his job and move out to Armada and bought a 200 acre orchard and the farmhouse is actually still here, it's right over there. And from there he was growing apples, was having a hard time selling them as wholesale and he decided to make it a U-Pick apple orchard. And from there it became his claim as one of the first U-Pick apple orchards in Michigan. And then from there he raised 13 kids on the farm, uh, lots of free farm labor to work and help out. And from there um, they grew up on the farm and the farm grew as they grew up. And my uncles, who are twins, uh, Pete and Paul, they're the ones that own the farm now. And they're you know, the head guys around here. And they, they grew it to the next level, um, added a lot of the entertainment that you see around here. So our pumpkin patch picking and all of the funland area that we have out in the farm, the train rides, the hay rides, all the entertainment areas for the kids. And so that's been a big attraction over the past few years. All right, well, all hands on deck here. Please. Yeah. Um, now, aside from apples, what else do you guys have as far as produce here? So our season starts in June with strawberries. Uh, we do strawberry picking in the summer, and then from there it goes raspberries, cherries are in, um, lots of vegetables will be in August and September, so tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, cabbage, broccoli, green beans, um, then pumpkins, obviously apples, and even Christmas trees to finish off the year. All right, so you guys just got about everything for every season. Yep. So Yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right, well, great. Thank you for your time, and uh, back to you guys. Thanks, Dan. So one of the newest additions to Blake Farms is the Cider House and Winery, where they have hard cider and wine. And it was actually started in a dorm room at Michigan State University. And Nick is talking with David all about how that went down. Nick? All right, we are here inside the production area, I guess you could call it, here where yep. all the magic happens for the hard cider. And I just want to know, how did this all come together? I understand this isn't the original production area that you guys had. So what kind of came together for this to happen. Yeah, uh, well I guess it started three years ago where um, you know, we had a tough season with the apple crop and our main business has been the season of the fall for selling cider and donuts and you know we're relying a lot on you know a few months for our business and that's you know kind of a big risk that you're taking and so it's very risky and it's not year-round and my cousin Andrew he was the one who started the hard cider company and he started making hard cider in his garage in college at Michigan State. And then from there, um, it just kind of talked our uncles into doing the hard cider company. And so we built a tasting room and out there was, we had a small production room, um, you know, about, a, about the corner of this room. And from there, uh, we originally were just selling in the tasting room right there on site. We weren't doing any distribution. Uh, then we had a few distributors come out and wanted to start taking the product into the market. And so we slowly just started picking up one by one and, you know, been marketing, some cool marketing, trying to gear it towards men and, you know, make it feel like it's a manly drink, whereas cider's been commonly more of a woman's drink. So after the cider gets pressed from what you saw in the front building, uh, we bring it out here for fermentation. And we actually just added another cider press back there. So that building is winterized in the wintertime. And now they're actually pressing pretty much all year round out here. So around the corner, there's another cider press. Um, so these are our fermentation tanks. Uh, they're all named after some of these guys' old girlfriends. So <laughs> try to keep the mood light out here and keep it Charlotte, fun. It's, uh, yeah. Did they meet her at a club or something? Yeah. Um, so fermentation is roughly 40 to 60 days, depending on what Robert is doing. Robert's our cider maker, okay. um, depending on what he's making. Um, from there, we go into our filtration and, and then it goes into the carb tanks. So these over here are carb tanks. That's where it gets carbonated. And, and then from there, uh, we go into packaging. So it's either bottling, canning, or kegging. Cool. Uh, we're actually adding another 30 feet down on this building to bump it out farther for more tank, tank space. Yep. Cool. So. This is, uh, everything gets made. Yep. Oh yeah. So this is one of our filters and more of our carb tanks and you can see the canning line is running right now. 
Some fresh beard vendor coming off the line. That's a beautiful thing, and there's always a lot happening. We're in the production room now, but there's orchards, there's mazes, there's really anything you can get, so we're gonna take it away. for us here at Shelby this week. You can watch us all the time at shelbytv.org and search us on Facebook at Shelby TV. Now before we go and we leave you with more scenes from Blake Farms, one of our own, Nick Buckler, has never eaten an apple. We just found this out. He's never bitten into one, never cut one up and eaten it. So we figured this would be the perfect time for him to try. So Nick, are you nervous? Are you excited? I mean, it's just another task in life that I gotta do in front of you guys. Yeah, that's true. That's why you're here. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> what do you think? Tastes like apple juice. Right? It's good. So is this like the start of like now just eating apples all the time for you? Yeah, I might might have to call a number on the back of the apple juice. I might be addicted. <laughs> Regular Mark Hackle over here. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and now we'll leave you with scenes from more of Blake Farms.